Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Writes. As I continue reviewing my favourite books of the year so far, we are going to be looking at A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed today. I've read half of one of this author's books before, so I did go into this read with a bit of hesitation. This book was so fantastically written that I was able to ignore some of my issues with it, so this is my full spoiler review of A Study in Drowning, which is one of my most anticipated reads of last year. This is why a gothic, dark academia story, and I ended up giving it 4 out of 5 stars. Is there a book that feels like it was written for you? A book that seems to know you in some soul deep way? A book that seems somehow to love you as much as you love it? When Ava Reed set out to write A Study in Drowning, she wanted to write about that feeling, about stories that see us, that save us. There is something precious and beautiful about that, but it also creates many thorny questions, such as, if you love a story, does it belong to you? The main character Effie is studying architecture, but her true passion lies in literature and one book in particular, a piece of folklore literature that is considered a modern day classic in this world. It is the one piece of media that Effie feels entirely seen by. The author passed away a few months before the start of this book, and Effie receives a mysterious letter inviting her to help redesign the late author's manor after she won a contest. Obviously, she has to go. This guy is her favourite author, and this is her favourite book. But when she gets there, she discovers that the manor is crumbling into the sea. It is not fit to be restored by a first-year architecture student, and there's another kid there named Preston from the Literature College who is intent on proving that the book is not written by the person that we think it is. Avery tends to be a very polarising author, and I expect this book to be no different in that respect. There are people who absolutely love a study in drowning, and there are people who absolutely hate it. Let's get a little deep into my thoughts about it. I'll start with things that I really liked about this book. First on the list is the writing, which is fantastic. A sense of atmosphere here is well done. If you're fond of very lyrical writing, vivid imagery, and a sense of tension that builds up throughout the story in a way that a gothic novel should, then you'll find a lot to like about this book. I feel like the language that Ava Reed uses is so precise for what she's trying to do. I also think that the character of Effie is resonating with a lot of people. She's like other Ava Reed characters I've read in the sense that she's an outsider to society and within her own life. Many people will be looking forward to reading a character like Effie, she's not like other young adult protagonists, and I don't mean that in a derogatory, not like other girls way, but she's not snarky, she's not witty. I wouldn't call her very strong or necessarily very brave, but I would call her a survivor. Her romance with Preston is very sweet and gentle. If you like the dynamic between Iris and Roman in Divine Rivals, then I think you will like this too. That being said, this is not like rivals or enemies to lovers like this book has been advertised as, and if you go into it expecting that, I think you'll be disappointed. The romance does move very quickly. Both of these things, the strong writing style and these characterizations, are what contribute to what I think is the strongest part of this book, which is the thematic elements of it. It is impressive how much Avery was able to cover thematically within a relatively short book. This is the book about how men take advantage of young women, how particularly academic systems would not change unless pushed and forced to change, and how people will endure difficult situations even if they get worse over time, because it's all that they know and they don't see a way out. It is often a dark book, but I think it's a very rewarding one. That being said, this is not a perfect book by any means, and there are a lot of parts of this book that I was frustrated with. The first critique you will see people have about this book, and something that bothered me as well, is the world building here is interesting. There are a lot of elements at the beginning of the book that are given the kind of thematic weight that usually implies that they're going to be important later, but they never become relevant again. For example, there's a war going on, and it has no bearing on this book whatsoever except a temporary one-sided race-based distaste between the main characters. There is folklore that significant authors in this world are consecrated as sleepers, who have the ability to magically defend the country, and this also never comes relevant, and we do not know more about it than surface level information. Neither of these points are necessary to make this book have a complete story, so it was confusing to be introduced by them. They could be removed and it would be less confusing. The geography of this world is also a little confusing, and this is something that doesn't usually matter as we're focused on one location for the bulk of the story. However, Ava Reed introduces a lot of political elements into the story to make the geography relevant. I think we have three different cultural regions that are relevant within the book. Preston the Love Interest is from what I assume could be Fantasy France, based off a French sounding place name and character surname. All we really know about this place is that there are mountains. Effie is from what I interpret as Fantasy England, and all we really know about this place is the school that she attends. And then what I recognise as rural Wales is represented by this region called the Bottom Hundred, which is economically disadvantaged folkloric part of the country. Fantasy England having a Welsh name and Fantasy Wales having an English name is what I can only describe as an interesting choice. I'm not saying it was a bad or wrong choice, just 
confusing, especially when Avery is putting in politics and imperialism and the effect it has on culture and who owns stories and who benefits from them. It's just strange from a linguistic history perspective. I think this is a book that could have benefited from removing some of the wider, irrelevant world building and focusing wholly on the Welsh folklore and Effie as that is where the emotional heart of the story lies. Avery describes this book as being about possession, the possession that a lover feels over their object, a storyteller over their story, a scholar over their subject. It is a love story, not just between Effie and Preston, but between Effie and Angerad, the book that pulls her from the dark. A study in drowning is a good fit for those seeking a haunting and atmospheric tale of self-discovery, empowerment and the blurring of reality, with a focus on struggles of women in a patriarchal society, the power of stories and the healing process of overcoming trauma. I think that's all I have to say about this book. I have an arc of her upcoming book, Lady Macbeth, and I have a Holden Juniper and Thorn at the library, so I hope Ava Reed might have another entry on my favourite reads of the year list. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.